Who said age is nothing but a number? Well, it's way more than a number. In your 50s, you may start to notice some unwanted changes, such as your skin getting thinner, your bones becoming more dense, and your metabolism slowing down or becoming allergic to things that you've never been bothered by before. In the 60s, the sex drive may even change. There are many things that might change as we get older, and there are also things that can be done to help. I'm Sarah Bernard, and today on the issues, we'll focus on living a vibrant life in your 50s and 60s. We have a mixed panel to talk about the issues of aging, as well as some really great solutions and resolutions that we can stick to as we, as we age. That's all coming up on this episode of the issues. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Today's panel will consist of people who will share some issues and ideas on the aging process. But first, let's take a look at something that people are doing to manage their aging process. <laughs> This is the uh, Zuka's Art Gallery, best place in town. We come here every Friday from 1 to 3, and the name of the band is Renaissance. We dance. You can bring your food inside. Some of the nicest people in the world. Matter of fact, we have people from all over the world. This is a place where I will never miss. This is the Zuka's Art Gallery on 14th and Montgomery. Well, this is one place that they can go. Uh, most of the people who can come are seniors because it's in the afternoon. Usually other people are working, but uh, as you see, we have a lot of seniors here, and so this is a good time for them to come out and just party and have a good time. So for the last five years, I've been coming up here just about every Friday if I'm not on vacation, and uh, we have so much fun. We listen to music, blues, we dance, we uh, gather around, we network, different events around St. Louis. Uh, mostly everybody is a senior. They're either retired or close to retirement. And this is a big, big event for most seniors for the full week. They look forward to it. Now that looks like a great way to manage your aging issues in the afternoon. And we'll talk about that later in the show, but right now let's get to our panel. I'd like to in introduce um, our panelists for today. First, we have Sheila Basapa Moyo, who is the healthcare coordinator for the St. Louis Area Agency on Aging. Hi, Sheila. She's 65 years old. Yeah. She's worked for the city of St. Louis since 2017 and, and has also worked in Africa and Asia for 12 years. And we also have Dr. Angela Sanford, who is the Associate Professor in Geriatrics Medicine at St. Louis University. She sees adults 65 and older, and she also serves as the Medical Director for a skilled nursing facility, a hospice agency, a home health company, and a retirement community. That's a lot of roles and a lot of hats you wear, Dr. Sanford. And last but not least, we have Peter Sparks, who is the owner of the 14th Street Artist Community Building, where art is by local artists of the Zuka Art Guild. Hi, Peter. Welcome Hi. to the show. And we're going to talk a lot more with Peter at the second half of our show. He's got some really cool things that he's doing um, in the city of St. Louis to, um, uh, to work with our, age, our aging community. Our community is not all aging, but those who are, right? <laughs> so we'll, we'll be talking to you more, Peter, in the second half of the show. So first, um, Dr. Sanford, I wanted to talk to you about um, this whole idea of the 50s and 60s, and, and it's a time in our lives when um, there's, there's changes happening. We're becoming empty nesters, and maybe we're thinking about retirement, but physically, things are going on with our bodies as well. So what are some of the things that you've studied and you've observed in your patients that we should be aware of? Yeah, well, thank you. Um, approximately 90% of older middle-aged adults, and I consider the 50s to 60s as late middle age. They're not old or elderly, it's late middle age. But about 90% of this age group has at least one chronic medical condition, and the majority of them have more than one. So we see things like hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and it's common in this age group because the blood vessels start to stiffen. Um, also, heart disease can start to make itself known and is a result of cholesterol-rich uh, plaques that build up over many years. And 
these plaques can, you know, block off blood supply and lead to heart attacks and strokes. Um, another thing that is pretty prevalent is obesity. About 42% of Americans are obese and the highest um, rates of obesity actually occur in the 40 to 60 year old age groups. And of course, you know, this goes hand in hand with some of the other unwanted medical conditions, the diabetes, uh, high, the high blood pressure, the immobility. Um, about 25% of older Amer Americans have diabetes as well. And osteoarthritis starts to creep up. There's like aches and creaks and um, it typically starts to show itself in its 50s and 60s. Yeah, okay, I can totally speak to that. Yeah. <laughs> the, one, the one thing I've experienced, I'm in my 50s, um, so that all sounds super scary. <laughs> and for any younger viewers watching this, they may not like all those things you just listed, but and I'm sure there's things that we can be doing in our younger years to help prevent some of those things from, from coming into our lives um, later. But we're here and, and maybe it's too late, right? But we can certainly address those things with, um, with doctors like yourselves who are there and who, that's your specialty. So um, let's shift over to Sheila for a moment. And Sheila, tell us about, um, so your role with the city um, deals specifically with this age group. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, well, um, my role is uh, healthcare coordinator for the St. Louis Area Agency on Aging. And one thing I am responsible for is the health education programs. And I facilitate mainly three programs. The first program is called Healthy Living with Chronic Conditions. So, um, I can really identify with what Dr. Sanford has said. Um, in this particular class, it's a six week class and it's free to people who are 60 and over as well as the disabled ages 18 to 59. We uh, give people a free book. This is the book, it's called Living a Healthy Life with Chronic Conditions and it's all about self-management and um, uh, trying to give people the skills to work with their provider, their healthcare professional, and uh, take more responsibility for their health. Um, and so this book is really uh, about self-management skills for heart disease, arthritis, diabetes, depression, asthma, all the various um, health conditions, chronic conditions that people have. The second class that I teach is uh, called Tai Chi for Arthritis and Fall Prevention. I'm not sure if uh, your audience knows this, but Missouri has a very high rate of falls amongst uh, seniors. I think we are like the fourth in the nation with uh, the highest number of seniors falling. So this particular class that the city offers um, is based on sun style Tai Chi and uh, it follows um, the um, um, Dr. Lam. It's an evidence-based, um, um, all of these classes that I teach are evidence-based, uh, which means that uh, they're supported by research as being effective so that's one class, a second class that I teach. Another class is called A Matter of Balance, and we look at fall prevention strategies. It's um, both an exercise class where people work on uh, the stability and their balance, as well as a uh, discussion class. Um, I'm also a, a part of a team that works on some major events for seniors and the disabled. I don't know if you all have heard of the Mature Mile Walk. We have it every year in Forest Park. Uh, people range in age from 40 to, I think the oldest person that comes out for our walk is uh, 103. Um, um, people come out in their wheelchairs and we walk for one mile uh, in the park uh, everybody gets a medal, they get a t-shirt. So I work on um, uh, events like that, including the medication take back program. I do that uh, in conjunction with the school. So we collect um, drugs and, and uh, uh, along with the um, 
let's see, I think it's the Department of, uh, of uh, Drug Enforcement to get rid of those out of date medications. So that's just some of the things that uh, the main events that we do. Obviously, lots of things that are going on in the city. And, you know, I'm interested, this is um, interesting what you said about Missouri being the fourth um, state of, for falls among seniors. And, you know, we're talking about people in their middle age, as you said, Dr. Sanford, and that is, you know, it's a curious fact, but it's something that I'm, I'm, I wanted to know your opinion, Dr. Sanford, on exercise in the 50s and 60s. How important is it and what should we be doing? to prevent that issue later, right? Right, so exercise really prevents all of the chronic, or helps with all the chronic medical conditions that we listed you know, earlier in the show. Um, it also helps with mood. I think that's something we should talk about too. You know, in addition to these medical problems, there's also life changes that happen in the 50s, the 60s with mood. Um, you know, so many different things, there's loss of loved ones or parents and maybe um, the 50 or 60 year olds transitioning to a caregiver role of an aging parent or aging spouse. And so there's you know, that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and Sheila, are you seeing that in um, what Dr. Sanford is talking about? Are you seeing uh, depression and, and um, mental health issues among the people that you're working with? Well, let me say that, um, that is an issue, uh, this feeling of isolation. But uh, one thing that we encourage is that people go to senior centers uh, where they can establish social networks and um, um, they go to YMCAs. A, a lot of people in my peer group uh, um, I belong to the O'Fallon Park Recreation Complex YMCA, and there are over 300 uh, seniors that go there uh, um, for swimming and walking, and that's something that we encourage our seniors to do. Uh, besides these, um, uh, the Tai Chi um, that I teach at the Y, seniors can take advantage of aerobics exercises. Um, right. They can do chair yoga. If uh, they find it difficult to stand, uh, they can do uh, walking. So there are a lot of activities that we encourage seniors to do. So Dr. Sanford, so Sheila's talking again, you know, a lot about seniors and senior issues. And when we're in our 50s and 60s, um, is there anything specific that you've seen that works in your older patients that they did when they were younger? So for instance, if they were more athletic, what do you, what do you see as different as they age? I think with exercise, it's really important to pick something that you enjoy. You know, you're not everybody's a runner, not everyone lifts weights, but you will only stick to it if it's something that you are connected to and really enjoy. Um, so I think that looking in that, and, and that goes along with hobbies as well, finding hobbies that you enjoy and really being part of a community, part of something bigger than yourself is really important in successful aging. Right. I, I would say um, that's really important. Don't be by yourself. Uh, um, you know, I've found that, especially in going to the Y, it's like I have a, a family at the a Y. social network. And uh, we all support each other. A lot of our family, our kids are gone. And, um, we're empty nesters. Uh, people that are widowers now, uh, um, no longer married, they're divorced or... Um, so when we're younger, our community might be our workplace, mm -hmm. our families, our young kids. It changes right. as we get older. So this is awesome. Really, really good stuff that you guys are talking about. So appreciate it. We've heard about some of the issues um, in our 50s and 60s that contribute to how we age as we get into those senior years. Important um, to stay connected. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we're going to talk more about that in our next, uh, in the next part of the show. We're going to talk about some more of these solutions and resolutions to the aging process. So when we come back, we're going to share some things that can be done to make your life living vibrant in your 50s and 60s. So stay with us. Protect yourself, your family, and your community from the coronavirus. Wash your hands often, avoid close contact with others, and visit stlewis-mo.gov for updates about how the city of St. Louis is handling COVID-19.
welcome back. In case you're just joining us, today's topic is living a vibrant life in your 50s and 60s. Our panel has just shared some of the issues that impact the aging process, and now we'd like to share some ideas to make it easier. Panel, what can we do to help the process? We're going to start with Peter because we have not heard from you yet. You've got some very specific solutions that you're doing uh, in the city of St. Louis, and we're super excited about the Zuka Art Gallery and Blues in the Afternoon, so tell us all about that. Well, again, it's just another way of building community. And I'll just follow up on what Sheila has talked about and Angela has talked about. Um, this has been going on, uh, the Rhythm and Blues has been going on for five full years. I haven't advertised it for the last three years because we're at capacity and we have a regular crowd. We all know each other. We're like extended family. Um, and Sheila used to be, uh, a very big part of it. Um, and we care about each other. And um, so, so be, yeah, go on. Let's be specific about like who who's coming, what are you all doing there, and when is it taking place? And I'm sure you'd be open to a few newcomers. So we want to make sure. Well, maybe, maybe a few, yeah. So <laughs> uh, it's the home of the Zuka Art Skill. There's about 20 plus uh, artists involved with uh, the Zuka Arts Guild. Uh, we have a group of artisans who are also involved with the building. Uh, we have a, uh, actually a lunch outreach uh, first three Saturdays of the month. Uh, Pastor Luana Morris and Denise Sheldon have been doing that for uh, about nine years now. So, uh, and in that community, we actually know all the homeless people in the neighborhood. Uh, and we get to know each other personally. And again, we built another little uh, kind of community there where we care about each other. So why, and, did you, why did you start this program in the first place? Well, that's a long story. <laughs> Give I don't think we have time for that. But um, it's uh, just something I had a passion to do. You had a passion for art right. or community? For art and, and, and music and uh, uh, getting this off the ground uh, was a nightmare, uh, and uh, thanks to a few things fell into place, and one was uh, Andrea Hughes, the executive director of the Zuka Arts Guild, and a, another person was Charles Smith, who helped facilitate the Rhythm and Blues show that we do. Okay. So it sounds like a I want to say also that uh, at Zuka Art Gallery, Peter has created a space for so many people, a lot of retirees come down and listen to the music, and we, um, they have art exhibitions down there. They've started a summer school for seniors down there. Where that was, Grant, yeah, that was and, Paulette Sankofa. That turned out great. Yeah, yeah and she has a grant that's gotten tablets for seniors to use to help right. uh, seniors stay connected for the summer school program where they take classes in the arts and so there's it sounds like a really vibrant place um and a yes it's very vibrant lots of things going on a great community so dr sanford from your experience um and, and the work that you're doing um working with your I, I know you said before the show that the youngest patient you have is 65 and it goes up from there, but how important are these things that Peter's talking about for the aging process? Huge, as you can see, the theme really is, is being part of something larger than yourself, developing community relationships, um, developing hobbies and passions. And that's what I really think is key for aging successfully. And really prevention is key. So you're, you're fostering these in your 50s and 60s and you'll still derive benefits from it, your 70s, 80s and beyond. Mm -hmm. So let me ask this question to all three of you. How often are you seeing people, let's say 50 plus, starting new hobbies that they've never tried before and or going back to hobbies they maybe had when they were in college or high school? Are you seeing that happening, any of you? Dr. Stanford, you're nodding. <laughs> Definitely. I had some patients that joined a language club. There used to be a language club at a nearby bookstore, and they started learning the foreign language they always wish they learned or that they learned and had forgotten over the years. Yeah, that's awesome. Sheila, what do you have to say about that? 
I would say that the people that I am around, um, people in their 60s, 70s, they want to travel. Um, they want to go out and, um, well, with this coronavirus, that's put a, a, you know, a hold on a lot of things. But, and I would say uh, regarding that, um, people are looking for new ways to connect with others. So right. technology is, it's a bit of a challenge for us. And uh, unless you, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I got a son, I got a grandson, they can come over and help me. But what if you don't have that? So, so it, it's been a challenge to try to get over that hump of the technology. But um, I think for seniors, slowly but surely they are. Um, people are starting to learn more about Zoom and starting to be more so, encouraged. And about being, being open to learning, right? Being open to learning, even right now. Open learning. To learning. Um, you know, there's, it's never too late. And one of the things as people get older too, and you address this, Sheila, people, the desire to travel, people have more time. And that's one of the good things, you know, um, they're not raising young children. They're not building a career necessarily. They might be wrapping up those activities. But so then again, remember with this virus, um, that's put a hold on so many different things. So um, uh, we're not able to travel as freely as we want to. And, and we realize that, hey, we're the ones that are most at risk. So um, we're having to rethink Right. You know, how we socialize. And uh, again, that's where the technology comes into play. Absolutely. And Peter, are you seeing, you what know, Peter's doing is so important because of this program that they have, and they got the grant to get the tablets and to teach seniors uh, the technology. Yeah. And we want to live, we want to live a productive life, many of us. Yeah. And Peter, um, to that to that end, how are you seeing this uh, the COVID um, situation affecting the work that you're doing at Zuka? How are you adapting? Oh, it's been terrible. Everything's come to a halt, except for rhythm and blues, which we started up a few weeks ago. We um, instead of 75 plus people being there, we're maybe limiting it to about 25 whatever, and a lot of the regular crowd isn't ready to come back anyway. And, uh, and we'll talk about things a little more tomorrow with uh, the virus, uh, ca the cases rising. Uh, we have to decide whether we wanna keep it going this next month. Uh, or just change the way, you know, we're, we do think uh, we have yeah, to do it's, yeah. it's up to some of the musicians also. Right. So we'll you just know, play it by ear. Yeah. And, you know, we're finding in our community that adaptation <laughs> has to happen, has to take place. And that can't stop the older we get. We have to be willing to understand that things sometimes don't always work the way the way we had planned. And we just keep changing and adapting as we go. Dr. Sanford, what are you seeing um, in your work in terms of the virus affecting um, people's ability to get out and do things to keep themselves mentally healthy right now and physically. I'm actually seeing a lot of social isolation and a lot of down mood, a lot of anxiety creeping in that wasn't there before and just feeling disconnected, you know, from family and from friends. And so it is about trying to find ways to, to achieve that connection. I've heard some of my patients are doing Zoom happy hours, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Another connection people are having is doing church, you know, church services online and whatever that looks like for you, a spiritual connection is important as well. Right, right. And are there signs that people should be aware of? I mean, you mentioned the anxiety, um, you know, months and months of this going on, the anxiety creeps up and, it sh and displays itself in different ways to people. What are some of the warning signs that you that you think we should be aware of? Yes, as uh, altered sleep cycle. So people sleeping too much or too little. Um, using maladaptive coping skills, maybe finding they're drinking more alcohol than they normally would, or maybe using food to cope. Those are all signs that anxiety, you know, might be there, depression, down mood, um, tearful episodes, or just feeling really apathetic or not motivated. 
Right. Peter, what are you doing yourself to get through this time? Well, I definitely try to keep busy. Uh, today, I was down at the gallery painting some woodwork on the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. um, I remodeled uh, our second floor bathroom and our basement bathroom mm -hmm. at our house. Uh, beginning in, uh, actually before the pandemic started and then continuing on through it. So just trying to think of things to do to keep myself busy. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Right. Sheila, what about you? Oh, I'm, I'm having a ball right now. Um, I enjoy working. I enjoy doing the healthy living classes. Uh, this is another way to overcome social isolation, uh, getting people to do um, health education classes by Zoom. I spent yesterday about two hours with a lady in her 80s to teach her how to download Zoom, and she just laughed after she figured out how easy it was. So it, it was great. It's, it's great. Well, in, in all, everything that you're doing is, is adaptable and is online, which is fantastic for our community. And I want to thank all of you so much for joining us tonight. You all have something really different, unique to contribute to this subject of living a vibrant life as we get older. And I really, truly appreciate you all taking the time tonight um, to share with our viewers on the issues. I'd like to thank each of you um, so much for joining us tonight. You each had something unique and different to contribute, and we really appreciate you taking the time to share all of that with our viewers tonight. And thanks to each and every one of you, our viewers, for tuning into the issues and for sharing your comments. And just want to remind you all that you can join the discussion too. Be sure to check us out online and also on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And don't forget to download the free STL TV app. And we're going to dig a little deeper into this aging process. Tune into our next edition of Lifestyle Medicine. You'll be surprised that the medicine is not anything that you take. It's what you do. See you next time on The Issues. Keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis.